morning. Good morning, Shiloh. Good morning. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. If he has been a good God and a great God to you this morning, just wave those hands and praise him. Amen. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. My name is Gloria Mendez, and I'm standing here on behalf of the missionary and the evangelism department this morning to welcome you all. I just want everyone to stand in the house of God this morning. Just want everyone to settle down and we are going to the word of God. Praise God. Could you just turn with me your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. I just want to welcome you all this morning to our missionary service this morning. I just want to ask all the missionaries in the house just to wave your hands. Praise God. Just give a, resurrect, a resurrection shout in the house this morning. Amen. Give another resurrection shout in the house this morning. He is worthy this morning. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning. Hallelujah. Morning. Glory to God. Just want to look to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we lift your name on high. We worship you this morning, for there is none like you, none to compare unto you, O God. You are Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the ending, and we bless your holy name. Great is your faithfulness unto us this morning. We thank you this morning, as this day, as a resurrection day. God, we come to give you glory. We come to give you honor. And we come to give you praise. We pray that your will be done into our service today, Lord. God, we pray that you will take the first place. God, we pray that you will sit among us today, God. And let our worship this morning be grateful to you. God, for all the way to Calvary, you went for us. And thank you, Lord, that on the third day, you raised from the dead. Oh, God, you was victorious over death. And today, God, we have this glorious privilege that we can come boldly to your throne. Hear our cry this morning. Let nothing be done of self this morning. Let self be crucified this morning. And help us, oh God, to see you, Lord, as Isaiah saw you high and lifted up, and your train filled the temple. Hear our cry this morning, and be a fence all around us, we pray. We pray that your will be done into your house this morning, as we look to you by faith, and we tell you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? I don't know about you, but I'm excited because our God, our Jesus, got up. The grave couldn't even hold. Me. So let's go on and sing. Good morning, Jesus. Okay? Good morning, Jesus. How do you do? So glad to be here. Lord, I thank you. I want to worship and honor and praise you to all. Good morning, Jesus. How do you do? 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 Good mor
Good morning, Jesus. How do you do? So glad to be here. Lord, I thank you. Worship, honor, and praise you too. Good morning, Jesus. How do you do? When I lay down and close my eyes. Visitor in the house, could you just stand in case you ask that you are here? Okay, amen. That means we don't have any visitors, we are all family. Right? Yes. Amen. Let's amen. give our Lord a praise. Hallelujah. We are all families, family members together. It is a great, it is great to see you. May God continue to bless and keep you that this Resurrection Sunday, you will give all the glory and the honor to the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords, yes. the one who was risen from the dead, and today he's alive within our hearts. God bless you today. Let today be a meaningful day today when you give him your all and all. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. My name is Deaconess Diana Beckett, okay? I'm just here today to remind you all that it is women's emphasis season. Amen. And we are having a paint and praise going to be held on April the 13th, 2024, from 12 to 2. The price is $35. Why don't you come on out and fellowship? It's a great time. We laugh tall and we look at each other's pictures and laugh a little bit too <laughs> so, so come on out you can see either any of the deaconesses but mainly sister audrey audrey butler jones yes okay or sister michelle marcy again have a blessed resurrection sunday amen good morning fellow baptist church family and friends happy resurrection sunday to you and your family. Just wish your neighbor a Good morning, Charlotte Baptist Church family and friends. Happy Resurrection Sunday to you and your family. Just wish your neighbor again to the right and to the left. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Jesus has risen, risen indeed. You just heard a few announcements about our, from our women's emphasis season. They're doing a great job. Kudos to the women of Shiloh. We're excited about the rest of your season and what has already transpired. I just want to append a few additional announcements to the paint and praise announcement you just heard. Number one, we had an awesome Holy Week all week long from Palm Sunday last Sunday. Um, we made crosses of palms and mailed them out to the sick and shut in and other members of our community. We had a beautiful Monday, Thursday service, foot washing, communion, 
Um, Jesus says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Uh, that's what mandatum means in Latin, mandatum. And from that, the Old English translation of the Latin is mandi, and it means commandment. And it refers to the John 13 chapter where Jesus says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Then on Friday, we had two awesome Great Friday services. One was at the Greater Mount Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church in the city of Trenton, where the seven last sayings of Christ was presented. And I was blessed to be one of the um, preachers of the seven last sayings, uh, preaching, preaching about Jesus' seventh saying, into your hands do I commend my spirit. Um, and then on Friday night at 6 p.m., we had an awesome Awesome, awesome Palm Sunday, uh, uh, awesome Great Friday production by our Liturgy of Praise and Worship Ministry, Sister Minister Kathy Malloy, Sister Betty Young, and so many others who put together choices. Look on the back of the bulletin there, and you'll see the presenters, Brother Derek Davis, Minister Tuku Duo, Minister Isaiah Key, Reverend Dr. Tamaris Moore, Minister Damian Peron, and our own sister, Tanya Young-Williams. It was emceed by our most reverend, Lois Key Alexander, awesome woman of God she is, and it was just a tremendous presentation. Thanks to everyone who made the production a great success, and it commemorated the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus and talked about the choices that you and I make in our daily lives. And I pray that we would always choose God so that we would have life and have it more abundantly. And that brings us to Resur and Holy Saturday yesterday. We participated with community events, particularly at North 25. And then here we are, Resurrection Sunday, March the 31st, to God be the glory. Indeed, Jesus has risen, risen indeed. God bless you. God keep you. Let's continue to celebrate Jesus on Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. Come on, won't you stand to your feet with us? Stand to your feet with us and give God some glory. For he's done such marvelous things. Amen. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Amen. When you think about his goodness, when you think about his grace, when you think about his mercy, your soul should shout, Hallelujah. There should be something rising up on the inside that says, I can't live without you. That I just want to be in your presence. If you can just raise your hand and give God some glory. This ain't about Tracy. Hallelujah. Tracy ain't telling you to do something you shouldn't already want to do. You should want to glorify God. You should want to praise God. Because he's been so good to you. Amen. And now we all demonstrate differently. But today is a special day. It's a holy day. It's resurrection day. So just give God your best because he gave you his best. Amen. Come on and get into a space of worship. Just glorify his name.
begotten Son, and who so Good morning, Shiloh friends and family. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior. He has risen, beloved. He has truly risen. It is prayer time, Shiloh. You can take whatever posture you want but we will go through some announcements in terms of celebration of life services first. Past services. Benny Holiday passed away March 22nd at the age of 95. Homegoing service was held Saturday, March 30th at Phillips Funeral Home in Jamaica, New York. Brother-in-law to Shiloh Baptist Church member, Maria Brown, and family and father to Audrey, Barry, and Florine. Bruce N. Graham Sr., age 75, passed away March 21st. The homegoing service was held Saturday, March 30th, at Minstros Fraternidad Christiana. Father to Bruce Jr. and Wayne Graham brother to Richard Graham, brother-in-law to Shiloh Baptist Church member, Wayne and Mitzi Teal. Celebration of life services, upcoming services. Mary Jackson, homegoing service will be held 11 a.m. Wednesday, April 3rd 
at Minstrels, Fraction Dad, Christina, mother to Todd Jackson, family friend to Shiloh Baptist Church member, Anne Marie Latte, Gloria Bethia, age 60, passed away March 25th. The homegoing service will be held Friday, April 12th at Huge Funeral Home. Mother to Jennifer McMillan and cousin to Gwen Manson. The memorial board is lit this day in memory of Dora Siplin Thomas, March 31st, 2017. James A. Smith, April 5th, 2015. Trustee Addie Betty Vaughn Coles, April 6, 2018. The memorial board is lit in honor of Deaconess Cheryl Velasquez, who is celebrating a birthday today, March 31st. Amen. And Trustee Misty Hightower Teal, who will be celebrating a birthday April 1st tomorrow. Sandra Osario, birthday, April 3rd. And we also want to celebrate Mr. Newsom, who will be celebrating a birthday as well. As you, you can now assume any posture you want as we go into the word of prayer, and we will be led by our very own Reverend C.C. Gopher Duo. Remember the words, I thirst. Remember the words, mother, behold your son. Remember the words, it is finished. Amen. Somebody need to praise God, man. Somebody need to clap. Somebody need to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Today, Resurrection Sunday. So I stop back hmm. to see what I saw the light. Somebody say, I saw the light. Hmm. I saw the light. No more darkness. No more darkness. It's time for light. It's time for light. Don't be afraid. Let us stand, please. Amen. Amen. Yes. I travel on South Broad Street. And I went to the cemetery for us to say graveyard. In Africa, we say graveyard, Liberia. But I went to the cemetery where we bury our loved ones. And I begin to search. I begin to look for a special grave. And when I look, I saw the grave of one of my deacons. I saw grave for deaconesses. Yes, I saw my mother's grave in Liberia. Then I begin to ask, where is the grave of this man? The one that was crucified for my sin. Where is the grave? And I was told, there is no good. He's alive. Don't look for me. Why are you weeping? We should be praising God. This is our prayer this morning. Let us just bless God. If you want to close your eyes, you can close it. Anything you want to do for that, let us just bless God for who he is and who he will continue to be. So we come this hour, dear Lord. We come just 
as we are. We come here, Lord, to say thank you. We say thank you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. Oh, Father God. Hmm. What can we say? Lord, it is you that took us to bed. We didn't know what was happening. We slept. We had dreams. We were on the other side. But you brought us. You brought us alive this morning. I said this morning. I said this morning. Because somebody, somebody, somewhere came to see this morning and they cannot see it. But through your grace, I said through your grace and mercy, we can come here to say thank you. So we come to praise your name. Your words are true, dear Lord. We look around, we went to all the cemetery everywhere, and we could not find you there. But what did we know? We found Jesus. We found him within our hearts. We found Jesus because we know and it is only God, it is only Jesus that got us here today. So we come, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for the light that all fear has gone, that we can march around, we can tell our brothers and sisters that don't know the power that Jesus Christ has said, because he left, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear has gone. Because he lives, Oh, my sake, bad. When the doctor said there was no other way, because he left, he brought me back to life. Because he left. Somebody can testify and say, because he left, I am here today. Because he left, I am who I am. Because he left, I can Praise my God. Oh, Jesus, thank you for this day. A day to come. But we say, Father God, thank you. As our pastor will be coming to say, God said the Lord. Father God, you speak through him. You guide him, dear Lord. You pull your anointing. That someone will see Jesus. And not Reverend Armstrong standing behind this pulpit. Let us see Jesus and know that it is only you. It is only you. We say thank you, Lord, for the service. Thank you for the choir. Thank you for everyone. Thank you, Father God. We just bless God this day. Our brothers and sisters are sitting on the seat of bereavement, Father God. We say, you just comfort them. You are the only comforter, dear Lord. All oh, those are in various hospitals, in nursing homes, places that they cannot be here. Lord, we pray for your healing, Father God. We know that you can do it. We know that you can take somebody from under the safe bed and bring them in this place to say, thank you, Lord, to say, I was sick. And the doctor said to my family that I was never going to make it. But through his grace and mercy, I'm here today. Thank you for this resurrection day. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your, for your blood. Thank you for covering us, dear Lord. We say thank you, Lord. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can tell others that the God that I'm serving is still alive and in the, in the business of healing us. Because he lives, shallow we live. In Jesus' name, let the children of God say hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I can hear you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. Hallelujah. The risen Christ. He's alive today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You can rejoice with us. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. The lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign, he's alive. Oh, they crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. He's alive.
church say amen church say amen again and one more time for the holy spirit god bless you all let's give god a praise off you for our praise team they do an absolutely wonderful outstanding magnificent and marvelous job lifting up the name of jesus and we praise the lord for them on this resurrection sunday it's good to be here amen just look to the neighbor, give him a high five, give him a little wave. Again, say happy Resurrection Sunday to God. Be all of the glory for the great things that only he has done. We want to invite you now to stand and let us explore the scriptures together out of the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 6 through 11. Why don't you say amen? We've well, located that text for us. First Corinthians chapter number 15, verses 6 through 11. The word of God reads as follows. Starting in verse 6, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, and then to all of the apostles. And then last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Verse number nine, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, 
because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace, somebody say grace, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Here ends the reading of God's divine and eternal word, may edify and may it sanctify the people of God. With you to pray with me, beloved, on the title of today's sermon, I am what I am. Turn to your name and say, neighbor, I used to be who I used to be, but today I am who I am, a child of God. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, bless the words that they would not turn, return void but that they may accomplish that which you intended. May hearts be encouraged and minds illuminated, souls convicted. Today we pray. Touch everybody, oh God, and I pray that you might even today save somebody. We give you glory and give you praise and give you honor. And we thank you, Lord, for this day, the risen day of the risen Savior, our Jesus, our Lord. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. You may be seated. Today is the day that we celebrate the risen Savior, Jesus, our Christ. Much like Christmas, it is the day that we anticipate and a day that we um, are anxious for its coming. It's a day in which we expect great things to happen. And like Christmas, the eve before the big day, yesterday, Saturday, um, the eve before this big day is coupled with the eve before the eve, which is uh, Good Friday or what I call Great Friday. And so this whole week, and especially this weekend, has been a week of great expectations. As Charles Dickens' great novel, is entitled great expectations for what God is doing within our lives again and again and again and again. Um, we expect God to do marvelous and extraordinary things. And today is the culmination of that expectation. Resurrection Sunday, the day that Jesus was risen from the dead. It is a day in which the Gospels all really foretell the same story. Uh, the Synoptic Gospels, the three Gospels that are similar, Synoptic, Synonymous, Matthew, James, and, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke's uh, Gospels are synonymous, called Synoptic, because they have great material in common. Uh, John's Gospel is not part of the synoptic gospels because it has a topical expression and understanding of Jesus, not a chronological one. And yet what we find about this day is that all four gospels tell the same story. They all tell that early on Sunday morning, Jesus was risen. If you look on the second page of your bulletin, you will see um, a couple of statements from two Gospels. I'm going to read you really all the statements from all four Gospels in John's Gospel that is written there on the left column of page number two. You all have bulletins. If you don't have a bulletin, raise your hand. One of the ushers will get you a bulletin. On the second page of your bulletin, you'll find in chapter 20, verse number one of John's Gospel, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. If you go down to verse number nine, it says, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. 
John's gospel says early on Sunday morning. And in Mark's gospel, chapter number 16, it says similarly in verse number two, and very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. Go ahead and raise your hand again if you need a bulletin. I think the ushers were looking around. We want to make sure we get them in your hands. Amen. And, in, and then further down in verse number six of chapter 16 of Mark's gospel, it says, but he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. In the gospel of St. Luke, it says very similar words. Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, that's Luke chapter 24, it says that. And then in Matthew's gospel, chapter 28, it says, now after the Sabbath day, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and other Mary came to see the tomb and behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook in for fear of him. And then he said to them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? All four of these gospels tell the same story that on that first day of the week, which is Sunday, we believe that Sabbath is the seventh day. And on that day, the scriptures, the commandments that we find in the Old Testament tell us that we must rest. But this scripture, these scriptures tell us that on the first day of the week, which we understand to be Sunday, that early on that first day of the week, the Bible says that Mary and some other women, some believe Mary, Jesus' mother, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and, and John, we, we see different women who come to the text. But here's what we have in common. Some women came, not men. You ought to ask yourself, where were the brothers? Amen, somebody. Where was Peter, James, and John? Where were the disciples? Where were the apostles? Some of them were afraid because of what they had just witnessed in Jesus' crucifixion on that Friday. But the women, somebody say, thank God for the women. The women, I thought I'd get a little shout on the last day of Women's History Month that the women would say, thank you, Jesus. Amen, somebody. But on that day, the women came early on that sun on that Monday on that Sunday morning and the Bible says that they found nobody literally there was no body of Jesus in the tomb now some stories I mean some versions of the gospel say the stone was already rolled back some one version says in Luke's gospel that a mighty angel from heaven comes down and rolls the stone back. Uh, there are other versions that says that there was one angel outside of the tomb. There are other versions that says there were two angels inside of the tomb, one at the foot of the, the place where Jesus was laying and another at the head of the place where Jesus was laying. I don't want people to get confused to somehow think that because different versions of the gospels tell different narratives of the story that somehow they cancel each other's out or the Bible is full of contradiction. That is not the case. It is no more the case that if I started over here and told uh, Sister, e uh, Ed uh, Sister e Edith a statement about Jesus getting up that morning, by the time it leaves her and gets all the way over here to Deacon Harry Brown, you can rest assured it's going to be a little bit added to the story. That's just human nature. We hear things differently. We see things differently. We receive things differently. And what we see are eyewitness stories from the different gospel writers, three of whom were apostles, Matthew, Mark, and or to and John and Luke, who was not there with Jesus, hears it firsthand from an apostle by the name of Paul. 
And so we get these versions. We believe the Holy Spirit, all scripture is divinely inspired and given to us by God for correction and reproof and doctrine and teaching. And so these verses are not to be taken as contradictory. These verses are to be taken as informative. We get different angles of the experience of Jesus's resurrection. Yes, perhaps some was mesmerized by the stone being rolled away. They wrote about that or they heard about that. Others were mesmerized by the fact that two angels garbed in white raiment simply asked the question, why are you seeking the living among the dead? It's a rhetorical question that all of us need to ask ourselves. But here's the reality that when the women got there, there was no Jesus in the tomb. That's the ultimate statement that Jesus' body that surely had been laid in that tomb was no longer there. So what happened to his body? Some would say this is all hyperbole. This is all make-believe that this could not have happened. How could a man have been risen from the dead if they put the body in there? Somebody took it out and they just wrote about that it was not there. What I believe, come on someone, that this is not hyperbole. I believe that this is not make-believe. I believe that this is the fulfillment of prophetic scripture that we see in the Old Testament that when Jesus was speak, when the Messiah was to be sacrificed that God who gave him the Messiah gave us the Messiah would raise him from the dead and this is the story of resurrection Sunday that there was no body in the tomb and these women then go off per the angel's discretion or uh, uh, the direction and tells them to go tell the apostles what they have seen, which is nobody's there, which means Jesus has risen, which means he's no longer dead, which means he's gotten up out of the grave, which means that he's alive. I don't know where he is, but he's not in the grave. I don't know where he is, but he's no longer dead. I don't know where he is, but I'm afraid for what I just saw, but I'm rejoicing for what I understand that if he's alive and he's not dead, that means I still have hope and my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus's blood and his righteousness. And so this is the story of Resurrection Sunday, a story in which these women go tell these men and they then go tell others that what was in the grave is no longer in the grave and what was dead is no longer dead. Jesus is alive. Then we pick up the story in the book of 1 Corinthians where the author is now a man by the name of Paul. Paul, whose name used to be Saul. And you should know this from your Sunday school lessons, that Saul was an enemy of God's church. That Saul persecuted those who called themselves Christian, that Saul saw no good in the Christian body of believers because he thought that if you espouse the gospel of Jesus, that it was blasphemy to the understanding and teachings of Moses and the Torah. And so Saul was sold out for Moses. Saul read the Torah and he believed in the commandments and the precepts that God gave Moses on the top of Mount Sinai. He was all in on teaching the Jewish understanding of the world. Paul had given his very soul and very being to defending, to be an apologeticist, if you would, for the teachings of not Jesus, but of Moses. And, 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 and this is the thing you have to understand about Saul. He would have considered him a, himself a good Jewish 
adherent. He would have considered himself completely in on the understanding of who the Messiah was. And he understood in his Jewish understanding that the Messiah had not yet come. So those Christians over there who are talking this blasphemous stuff that Jesus is the Messiah, that he came and that he was crucified and that he was risen from the dead, that's blasphemy. And we must put a stop to this kind of teaching. He would even consider it cultish. He had to put a stop and he would go and he would find those who were teaching about Jesus and he would persecute them until they recanted and said they don't believe in Jesus. They believe in the teachings of Moses. And if they did not recant, he would even kill them. And so in this fervor of Judaism, as I'd like to say, Saul was on his way. And this is where he picks up this story. He says in verse number six of chapter 15, if you read the text, he says, then Jesus appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some of them have died. And then he goes on to say, then Jesus appeared to James and then to all of the apostles. And in verse eight, he says, but last of all, as to one untimely born, Jesus appeared also to me. Now, this is the man I just outlined to you whose name used to be Saul. But when God got a hold of him and did a, a new thing in his life, God changed his name from Saul to Paul. And then that same convert begins to be the biggest builder of God's church as opposed to the biggest destroyer of God's church. And now Saul, Paul, whose name used to be Saul, is writing and reflecting in his understanding of Jesus. And he writes these words that when Jesus got up, he appeared to a whole bunch of folk. And lastly, he appeared unto me. Now listen to how Saul or Paul describes himself. In verse number nine, he says, after he says, lastly, God, uh, uh, Jesus appeared to me. He says, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Paul is reflecting and really having a moment of deep regret. Why did I persecute God's church when I should have been a builder of God's church? Why did I do those things which were antithetical to the will of Jesus? I did it thinking that I was doing the right thing, but in doing the right thing, I was actually doing the wrong thing. And I want to just stop right here for a moment on Resurrection Sunday and challenge all of us to think when we, before we knew Jesus as our Lord and Savior, did we think we were doing the right thing or were we really just doing our own thing? Because truth be told, many of us were out there doing our own thing, not realizing that it really was the wrong thing. Can I get a witness on this Sunday morning? I know it's Resurrection Sunday. I know we're dressed up. I know you believe in Jesus. I know you've come to celebrate him. But I would challenge every single one of us that before we got saved, we had a past. And in that past was surely something that we may not have been very proud about. It may not have been persecuting God's church. But if we were doing things that were not in the will of God, in, in essence, we were persecuting the church of God. And I just need you to think about that moment when you can realize that had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Can I think of a time when I was out there in the world, cutting up a rug, drinking everything I can drink, smoking everything that I can smoke, 
going everywhere I probably should not have been going. But because of the grace of God, God looked beyond my faults and gave me another chance. This is really what Saul, Paul is talking about. He says in verse number 10, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, his grace towards me has not been in vain. Grace in theological terms is getting something you did not deserve. And mercy is not getting what you should have gotten or what you should have deserved. And there are some moments in my life where I got some stuff I deserved. I shouldn't have done it. And I got caught and I got what I deserve. I was speeding a little too fast in a 25 mile an hour zone. Police pulled me over. I said, Mr. Officer, I didn't realize I was going that fast. And he can say, well, take this and tell the judge you didn't think you were going that fast. Whether it is a ticket or parental punishment or some other thing, there were moments where we probably got what we deserved. But there are some moments I'm sure that all of us can think of where we did the deed, but we didn't get what we should have gotten. And that's called mercy, that you did not get what you deserve to have gotten. But there's another theological concept called grace. And grace is when you get something that you did not deserve. It's not that you did something wrong, but there was no rhyme or reason why you should have gotten or received what you received and that's called grace when I think about grace I think about waking up every morning I should not have woken up but God gave me grace to get another day to be able to do what he called me to do when I think about grace there are some moments when I was on my job and I got a promotion or I got a benefit that I didn't even apply for that that's called grace. Uh, another way of thinking about grace is when you're going about your business and then all of a sudden God opens the windows of heaven and pours you out a blessing that you don't even have room enough to receive. That's called grace. And I am sure all of us sitting here today have been recipients of God's grace. Can anybody think of one thing that God gave you that you did not deserve but he gave it anyway and on this resurrection Sunday I hope you can just take a few moments just to give God some praise for the grace of almighty God and in point of fact the very salvation that we have today is a gift of grace for the Bible says we are saved by faith through we are saved by grace through our faith not of works unless any man or woman should boast this tells me that the celebration we celebrate today of Jesus's resurrection from the dead is both an act of mercy and an act of grace. Paul realizes this because he realizes that in the persecution of God's church, he should have been punished. But on that dusty road to Damascus, the Bible says God strikes him down, blinds him with a light, and asks him the questions, Saul, why doth thou persecute me? And before Saul was able to regain his sight, God had changed his name from Saul to Paul. And God had changed his very identity from a persecutor of God's church to a builder of God's church. And then this is why Paul says these words, 
last of all, Jesus appeared to me. Someone he should not have appeared to because I didn't deserve his appearing. But because of his grace, he looked beyond my past deeds and gave me another chance to be a builder of God's church. And he changed my name and he changed my identity and he changed my mindset and he changed my walk. And so on this Resurrection Sunday, I need all of us to think about the change that God has done in your life. I know you have not always been perfect, but thank God for God's grace. I know you didn't always give your tithes, but thank God for God's grace. I know you didn't always read your Bible every Sunday, but thank God for God's grace. I know you didn't always help the helpless, but somebody say thank God for your grace I know you didn't always help your brother or sister but somebody ought to say thank God for God's grace he looked beyond your faults and gave you another chance and I'm so grateful on resurrection Sunday that the same God that gave Paul another chance is the same God that's still giving me another chance and he's the same God that's giving you another chance and so on resurrection Sunday just say thank you Jesus for another chance thank you Jesus for another Sunday thank you Jesus for another day thank you Jesus for another opportunity to worship you thank you Jesus for another opportunity to praise you thank you Jesus for another opportunity to celebrate you thank you Jesus for another opportunity to glorify you thank you Jesus I know I didn't always do it right in the past but I thank God I'm not who I used to be he's molding me and shaping me and strengthening me and lifting me and stretching me so I can be better today than what I was yesterday thank God for his grace Paul, Paul not only acknowledges the grace of God, but he, he says something profound to me. He says, I'm the least. Put verse 10 back up. I'm the least of these. Go back to verse number nine. Excuse me. I'm the least of these who should have been given the gift of seeing Jesus. Because of my past, but because of his grace, I am who I am. I know that there will always be folk who want to remind you of who you used to be. But I need you to see this phrase. Put verse 10 up. Thank God for his grace. For I am who I am. I'm not who I used to be, and I'm not everything I want to be, but I thank God that I am who I am. I'm still standing on his word. I'm still praising God. I am who I am. I'm not the best singer. I'm not the best preacher. I'm not the best worshiper, but I'm going to give them what I got. I am. And what I have, I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to give them my best praise. I'm going to give them my best worship. I'm going to give them my best song. I'm going to give them my best sermon. I am who I am. I can't be anything I'm not. I used to be who I was, but because of his blood, I am saved by his grace. I'm covered under his blood. I've been bought with a price. I am who I am. I'm more than a conqueror. I am a child of the king. I am a believer in Jesus. I'm standing on the promises. I am 
who I am. You can call me whatever you want to call me, but I know who I am. I am a believer. I am a believer in Jesus who made a way out of no way, who built bridges over troubled waters, who healed my body, who opened doors that I could not open for myself. Paul makes a profound statement in this statement of his identity. I am who I am. There will always be people who want you to be something that they're not. There will always be people who try to remind you of your past. There will always be people who try to knock you down because of where you've come from. There will always be people who try to remind you that you didn't always used to be as holy and sanctified as you think you are now. But I need you to not listen to what anybody else says about who you are. But you ought to listen to the only person whose identity about you matters most. And that is God Father, God, Son, and God, Holy Ghost. And when people try to call you out of your name, remind yourself of what grandmama used to tell me. If you're not who they say you are, then why are you concerned about it? Can I say that again? Folk will always say something. But if you're not what they say you are and you know who you are and you know who you are, then I need you to stay right there in that place of who you are in Christ. Paul makes this great statement. I am who I am in, G in Jesus. And he says the grace of God is what has allowed this to be for me. He says, on the contrary, I worked harder than any of the other apostles, but for some strange reason, God has allowed all of us, those that walk with Jesus, because remember, Paul never walked with Jesus. Paul was converted and became a believer after Jesus ascended. So Paul is getting this gift of conversion after Jesus has ascended, but it is as if his apostleship is as authentic as those who walked with Jesus. And this is the beloved thing that I think all of us should know. None of us walked with Jesus. But because of God's grace, our conversion and our salvation is as authentic as those who walked with Jesus. This leads Paul to conclude in verse 11. And I'll go to my seat on this. He says, whether then it was I or the other apostles, so we proclaim Jesus is risen, and so you have come to believe. They have come to the conclusion that Jesus, who was crucified and put in a borrowed tomb, was risen from the dead. And because he was risen from the dead, that that Christ that conquered all power, conquered all um, dominion, of heaven and earth with power in his hands. The scriptures suggest that that same God who lifted Jesus took him into heaven and is also working through the Holy Spirit to give us conversion as well. And we who have been changed are to celebrate that which we proclaim. And here's what I love about Saul. 
when Saul was out in the world, he was giving the world everything he could give. But once he got saved, he started giving God who believed he, through Jesus Christ everything that he could give. In other words, some of us, when we're out in the world, we jump and we run and we shout for things in the world. But when we get saved, it's as if we've lost our energy and our fervor. And I just stopped by on Resurrection Sunday to say when you were jumping and shouting out there in the world before you got saved, I want you to shout and jump just as loud now that you are saved because you realize when you weren't saved that God had God's hand on you. And now that you are saved, you've got more to shout about. You've got more to jump about. You've got more to run about than when you did before you got saved. So don't give the devil more than you give God. If you jump for the devil, you ought to jump for God. If you ran for the devil, you ought to run for God. If you shouted for the devil, you ought to shout for God. Do I have any shouters in the house today? Do I have any jumpers in the house today? Do I have any runners in the house today? If God has been good for you and God has been good to you. I want you to lift up your hands on Resurrection Sunday and give God a shout. I want you to lift up your mouth and give God a praise. I want you to jump on your feet and jump for Jesus because God has given you his grace and his grace is sufficient. Do I have anybody here who can just say thank you, Jesus, for your grace? Thank you, God, for your gift. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for your keeping power. On Resurrection Sunday, I'm going to give God the best that I have because I might not get another chance and I'm not going to let a rock cry out for me. In the name of Jesus, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let the church say amen. God bless you. God keep you. God keep you is our prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the story of Saul, whose name you changed to Paul. We thank you for the story of a man who didn't deserve what he got, but you gave him the gift of grace anyway. And in this story, we see ourselves. And we thank you, Father, that we're the last one who should have gotten that blessing. We didn't deserve it, but you gave it to us anyway. So like Paul, we recognize the gift of grace. And the gift of grace is that which you gave through Jesus, your son, on Calvary's cross. And so on this day, Father, we, we proclaim so that others may believe. We signify so that others may come to see that the same Jesus, the same grace that converted Paul is the same Jesus and the same grace that converts us. And so even these thousands of years later, we are reminded of your grace and your mercy, God. And I pray on this Resurrection Sunday that we may continue to stand firm in our own identity, 
not elevating ourselves more than we should, but also not belittling ourselves more than we ought. We are who we are, no more, no less. Thank you for saving a wretch like us. Thank you for giving us another chance. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Thank you for be making ways out of no way. Thank you for building bridges and healing our bodies and providing jobs and taking care of our children and preserving our marriages and taking care of our church, even in the midst of chaos in the world. God, we see you doing it. And we proclaim that others might believe. So, Father, if there's someone here who doesn't know you, hasn't had this experience of resurrection, conversion, transformation, I pray that you would change them like you changed us. If someone's listening on the YouTube or the Facebook, that you would even through the social media, God, do a work of conviction. Yes, you can take the least, the lost, and the last, and you can do for them what you've done for the first and the so-called greatest among us. You're the great equalizer because all of us, no big eyes and no little U's, we're all covered by your blood. So thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, have your way in somebody's life right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Let God's people say together, amen, amen, and amen. Deacons, Deaconess, clergy, help, help me extend the invitation to discipleship. The men and women, deacons and deaconess and clergy are standing, simply extending an invitation because we believe that like somebody extended their hand to us, we want to extend our hand to you. If everyone could stand to their feet as we extend this invitation, praise team is going to sing. And as they do, if you don't have a relationship with God, I invite you to make that decision right now. You can come forward, you can step out of your seat, come on down the aisle, then one of these men or women will gladly meet you and pray with you and pray for you. If you already know Jesus, already have a relationship, and you're looking for a church, we would love to have you come and be a member of our congregation. We're not perfect. There is no perfect church. But we try to be a Bible preaching, Bible believing, Holy Spirit filled church. And if you're looking for that kind of congregation, we'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. Anybody here today? Anybody here today? Just step out of your seat. Come on down the aisle. Give us your hand and give God your heart. Anybody here today? Mending and healing. Mending and healing. Heart fixing is free. Heart fixing is free. Inside your garment. Inside his garment. Are miracles to see. Are miracles to see. Reach out and touch him. Reach out and touch him. Get all that you need. Get all that you need. For there is no limit to there is no limit if you believe if you believe he has rest, he has rest for the weary and strength for the lame you may be seated god bless you, you may be seated he's passing our blessings there's one with your name there's one with your name Come on. joy peace deliverance Salvation is free. Why don't you come to Jesus? Come to Jesus. He's all you need. He's all you need. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He's all you need. 
One more time. He's all the you blessings need. he has rest. He has rest for the weary and strength for the light. He's passing out blessings. He's passing out blessings. There's one with your name. There's one with your name. Let's put our hands together and give God some praise. We thank God for the praise team. You may take your seat. God bless you. The deacons and deaconess who are still standing, the clergy who are still standing, um, we offer ourselves as people to whom you can speak. And again, they're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. There is no perfect church. We're ordained and consecrated to help others along their Christian journey. And if that's at the beginning, we'd love to talk to you about that. If that's in the beginning, in the middle. Um, if you've hit a bump in your Christian journey, we'd love to talk to you about that. And so we'd love to have a conversation. And that's really what this is about, an invitation to conversate. And maybe in the conversation, you can get clarity and clarification about some things that you may or may not know about things you believe or you may not know you believe. So we'd love to have that conversation with you, all right? Those of you at home, again, the number on the screen is there for you to call. Someone is live right now waiting to take your call, 609-695-5700. God bless you. Deacons, Deaconess, clergy, you may take your seat. We're going to get ready now to give our gifts unto the Lord. Our ushers are going to assemble quickly. And as we give our tithes, we just have the one basket today. Um, we ask that you would give your tithes first because that's how the church survives and thrives on the, the tithing of God's people. And so as the ushers come forward, um, Sister Lucille is holding the one basket. And if you're making your envelope a checkout, make it out to the Shallow Baptist Church. If you want to split your offering and you can say 80% of this goes to my tithes. 20% of goes to the scholarship. You can do that. We are absolutely driven by your faithfulness to God's kingdom, but also where you feel you want to direct your gift, um, your offering above and beyond your tithe. Your tithe helps us to run the church. Your offering helps us with specific ministries. All right. And then those of you who are given to the capital campaign pledge, thank you. We are absolutely going to do something to help transform this community and whatever you give towards that pledge. And if you don't know, if you don't have a pledge to the campaign, we'll be reaching out to you and see if you would like to make one. All right. God bless you. Let's go ahead and stand to the right. Would you stand and follow the direction of the ushers to the left? Would you stand and follow the direction of the ushers? And then we'll move into the two center sections. Our praise team will give us a song as we give our gifts unto the Lord. Blessed with his goodness, blessed with his love, blessed with his showers that come from above, blessed with his sunshine, blessed with his air, I'll go on helping everywhere. This is my mission, this is my prayer, helping the need everywhere. Those in the center, would you please stand and follow this the direction of the ushers? This is my mission, this is my prayer, helping the need everywhere. God gives the courage. Faith leads the way, onward we travel, happy and gay, thinking of others, willing to share, taking 
taking God's message everywhere. This is my vision. This is my prayer. Helping the needy. Helping the needy everywhere. Remembering others whenever I pray. Looking to Jesus, He is the way. Onward I travel, He's by my side. I'll never falter. He is my God. This is my mission. This is my prayer. Helping the needy everywhere. This is my mission. This is my prayer. Helping the needy everywhere. Man, would you all stand and just give thanks to God? All things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own. Amen. You may be seated. Um, I saw at least five babies under one. <laughs> so let, let's start off with babies under three, which you or under one stand up. Moms, grandmoms, dads, if you're holding a baby under the age of one. Isn't that beautiful? How old? Two months. My goodness. And how old over here? Nine nine months all right so let's go to under two if you have a little one here under two would you stand up there's another one right there amen amen all right how old one okay uh, 14 months love it under three got a little one under three and you haven't stood up already there, right there how old is this little one Two. Love it. Love it. Anybody else? All right. Uh, under four. Under five. All right. So all the moms and grandmas with babies stand up. Dads, we just want to see everybody at one time. Isn't that beautiful? To God be the glory. And yes, the grandmoms and the moms and the dads stand up too with the babies. Let's celebrate the families. Amen. Let's thank God for the families. To God be the glory. I know for a couple of these little ones, we're planning a baby bet a baby blessing and so do let us know if you're not on that list we'd love to have you and your little one on the list to be blessed all right just stop by the front office and miss lorraine will see you and then i got a whole pew right there all under the age of what right back there nobody just want to know how old are they <laughs> He was calling for babies. Mom, I'm 10 years old. <laughs> Let's give all the young people a big hand of encouragement. Amen. We got some over here too. Amen. Amen. How old is this little one right here? Six. Amen. And how old is the other little one? All right. And right back there in that row, I see another row. I did the blessings. That's right. That's right. Wonderful. Well, listen, I thank God for all the young people on Resurrection Sunday. I hope that we can celebrate. Got some over here, too. How old is this little one over here? Six. I love it. She used her preacher voice. She said, I'm six. I love it. So thanks be to God. Have a great Resurrection Sunday, everyone. Why don't you stand to your feet? Go ahead and just wave to your neighbor. Give him a little air hug, a little elbow bump. Say happy Resurrection Sunday to them one more time. And um, I want you to enjoy your afternoon. 
Um, may God continue to smile upon you is our prayer. And uh, we look forward to the women continue to be involved in our women's fellowship, our women's emphasis season. And I thank God for all of the saints, all of the saints, all of the saints who are out here today. May God continue to smile upon you and watch over you is our prayer. Let's go in a word of prayer. Yes, ma'am. Pray for the family of Sharon Williams, and that's Sharon's grandbaby. Yep, yep, absolutely. We sure will. Let's do that after, after we finish the benediction. Come on up, all right? All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for Resurrection Sunday. As the Apostle Paul, who didn't walk with Jesus, but he came to know Jesus, so too do we, who didn't walk with Jesus, we have come to know Jesus. And Jesus appeared to us. Not in a dream. Not just as a part of a voice. But that dream, that voice, however Jesus appeared, literally transformed our lives. And we have gotten closer to God because Jesus appeared to us. And I thank you, Jesus, that you are still appearing to men, women, boys, and girls. And so, yes, you are risen from that grave. You are not in that sepulcher. The stone has been rolled away. The linen has been balled up and is laid to the side because Jesus has risen. And on this day, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because Jesus lives, our fear is gone. Because Jesus lives, and I know he lives. He lives within my heart. So God, go before us and keep us forever under your hand of provision and protection. And may we continue to proclaim the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus's, Jesus Christ's resurrection. In the strong and mighty name of Jesus, we do pray that all of God's children, the redeemed of the Lord, say together, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Oh, let the church. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church. Let the church say amen. One more time. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Oh, let the church. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church. Let the church say amen. We want to wish happy birthday to all the birthday babies on the screen. Cheryl Velasquez's birthday today. Mitzi's birthday is tomorrow. And all the birthdays this week. God bless you. Veronica Odom, thank you for being with us today. We praise God for all of our visitors. Come back again and worship with us next Sunday. We love you in the name of... Jesus, God bless you. All parents of children birth to 18, just five minutes up at the front.